In this tutorial, I'm going to explain about the four scenarios of warm gates. So consider the warm like this, and this is the warm wheel. Assume that this is the front view and this is the side view, and warm is rotating in the counterclockwise direction when you are viewing from the left side like this. This is the left side view. then automatically when it is rotating in the counter clockwise direction when the worm is rotating in the counter clockwise direction the direction of the tangential component will be like this and that is transferred onto the worm wheel like this this is tangential component transferred from worm to worm wheel but this is acting along the axial direction of the worm wheel that's why the tangential component of worm will become the axial component of worm wheel now this is p2 of a because of this the reaction will be there on the worm that is p1 of t this is the tangential component but this tangential component is transferred to the worm wheel and that is becoming the axial component next coming to this particular view i am taking the help of two views to represent the three component of gated forces those are the tangential component axial component and radial component now i will take the help of this view this is the direction of the radial component this is acting in the downward direction here here it is acting in the upward direction coming to the axial component you have to take the help of your right hand so keep the fingers in the direction of rotation that is the counter clockwise direction then this thumb will indicate the direction of the axial component so here the direction will be something like this towards your left hand side so that's why this is the axial component when this is transferred to the worm wheel that will become the tangential component in the opposite direction that means p1 of a that is axial component of worm is becoming the tangential component of worm wheel actually this will act as force and this is the reaction because of this force this will start rotating in this direction okay so this is the representation of forces p2 of a axial component is p1 of t P2 of T is equal to P1 of A, and radial components are equal, equal and opposite forces, separating forces. Now I'll represent all the three forces in a single diagram to obtain the equation for radial component and axial component. This is the direction of the helix. Then, this is the radial component. This is the tangent. This is the axial component. This is the tangential component. then to represent the resultant just form a box like this then this is the resultant force that means this is the resultant force and these three are the components for the time being in this plane you assume this particular force as some pn finally we will eliminate this pn and we will obtain the equations for pr and pa in terms of pt because pt you are obtaining from power this angle angle made by the resultant force with the horizontal plane is the pressure angle alpha then angle made by this particular force pn with respect to this plane is some gamma this is the lead angle now give the names like a b c d e f for our convenience then from the triangle abd that is this is the triangle abd this is along ab we will get pn along ad we will get pr this is p this angle is pressure angle alpha then pn is equal to p cos alpha pr equal to p sin alpha from this triangle we will get pn and pr equations next we will use these equations for solving for axial component and radial component next take the plane ae bf this is ae bf from this plane along ef you can get pt along af you will get pa and this is pn this angle is lead angle gamma now from this plane you will get pt and pa equations like this pt equal to pn sin gamma and pa equal to pn cos gamma now pn value is known to you pn equal to p cos alpha now you substitute that pn value here 
we will get the equations like this now we have p now we have pt equation and pa equation and pr equation in terms of p so these are the three equations along with these three equations because of the surface contact we will get the friction force also that's why to get the friction force i am taking the top view this is the direction of the this is the direction of the helical thread this is lead angle gamma this is the resultant force p when you are seeing from the top that resultant force is making an angle alpha but you can't see that from the top view this is the top view then as it is rotating in the counter clockwise direction the friction force will be in the opposite direction that's why this is the friction force mu p in the opposite direction then you split this friction force mu p into its components like this this is mu p cos gamma this is mu p sin gamma mu p this mu p cos gamma is acting in the tangential direction mu p sin gamma is acting in the axial direction but in the opposite axial direction but in the opposite direction of the previous force that is this force so component along the tangential force is called mu p cos gamma component along the axial component is mu p sin gamma but in the opposite direction of this force when you superimpose these two equations these and these two equations the resultant tangential component is equal to sum of this plus this then take p as common then the final equation will be something like this this we call this as 1 then the total axial component is equal to like this that is sum of this force and this force sum means this is acting in the opposite direction that's why you have to give negative sign to this value now take p as common you will get the value like this you call this as equation 2 then this is equation 3 that is pr equal to p sin gamma pr equal to p1 of r equal to p sin alpha so till here i am not adding suffixes from this stage onwards i am giving the suffix that means i am finding the values for worm after that automatically i can write the equations for worm wheel now by taking the ratio of 2 by 1 you will get the value of 2 by 1 means axial component by tangential component for worm then this p and p gets cancel you will get the axial component equation in terms of tangential component this tangential component anyway we are getting from power then you can solve for axial component then take the ratio of 3 by 1 if you take the ratio of 3 by 1 you will get the radial component in terms of tangential component in this way you can obtain the equation for axial component and radial component thanks for watching my video if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and tap on the bell icon to get the notification for my latest video tutorials straight away to your inbox